Hello, and thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You. My name is Sylvia Black, and I'm your host. Please join me every Wednesday right here on Time Warner Public Access TV Channel 20, 6.30 to 7 p.m., and Saturdays from 12.30 to 1 p.m. in the afternoon, right here on Time Warner Public Access TV Channel 20. And also, you can hit me up on Facebook at Dr. Sylvia Black. You can also visit my YouTube address at sblack3001. You can email me at sblack3001 at gmail.com. And again, I want to thank you for joining me today. I'm a licensed real estate broker of affordable homes and apartments in Williamsville. I have my master's degree in sacred theological divinity. And I am licensed to preach and ordained as a minister. And my name is Sylvia Black, and I'm your host, and I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You, where I talk about the books that I've written, and I build a show around it. Today I would like to talk to you on a continued basis of my book, <clears throat> I Will Do a New Thing in You, and this is available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. Okay? Now, as I had mentioned before, I wrote this book because I was dealing with depression. I had felt that I was at one of my lowest points in my life, I thought... And I needed to be ministered to people, people, you know, I would talk to people, you know, I, you talk to people, but sometimes they just don't have just the right word for you. And I noticed that when I, when I pick up the Bible, you know, usually I can find what I need. But sometimes I have to actually put my thoughts down on paper so that I can read it over and over again. And as I minister to you, I'm actually ministering to myself. And I want to just thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You. Now today we're going to talk more about the book, uh, I, uh, I Will Do a New Thing and You Say It the Lord, and it's available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. And this book basically, I guess if I was to sum it up, I haven't really thought about how to sum it up, but if I was to sum it up, I probably would sum it up as a book that talks about how to handle brokenness, <clears throat> how to come up and out, how God can get the glory when you're down and out of bringing you up and out. Okay, a lot of times we're broken, broke down, broken hearted, broken relationships, and we don't know how we got there, and sure don't know how we're going to get out. But there's one person, one man, one Savior who can do that for us, and his name is Jesus. And he can heal us up out of our brokenness and deliver us up out of our mess. And I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, this book has about eight chapters in it. Okay, again, it's available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. Now, for all of you who think that you you know, once you, a lot of people think that when they decide they want to serve the Lord, they want to, they turn their life over to Jesus, that things are going to be nice and easy and sweet and, and everything's going to be peaches and cream. Well, honey, I could let you know that it, that's, is, could be more farthest from the truth than anything else. Okay, um, your life will not be easy. You will not, um, you know, you're going to be broken. You're going to go through some mess and some stuff and some junk. You're going to go through the trials and tribulations. People are going to persecute you. They're going to say all manner of evil against you. Uh, you're going to be in a situation where you don't know how you got there and don't know how to get out. Okay? But let me tell you something. If you want to know what hell is like, just try being a Christian. Right? Try being a true child of God. Okay? In order to know the power of Jesus' resurrection, we have to know the power of His suffering. Okay? And if you really think, uh, think on that and meditate on that for a while, you will understand the, the, the power of his suffering. First of all, you know, I'm glad that Jesus didn't say, ouch, that hurts, you know, get it off of me, I'm getting down from here, you know. <laughs> you know, that would have been something else, right? But he dealt with it, you know, he dealt with the pain, you know, and that's what we have to deal with. We have to understand, see, that there's two types of suffering. You're going to suffer as a slave to righteousness or you're going to suffer as a slave to sin. In other words, you're going to suffer for doing what's right or you're going to suffer for doing what's wrong. Either way, we're going to suffer. There's no way that you can avoid suffering. And I understand, my brothers and sisters, more than any of you probably realize that I know that suffering is painful and nobody wants to suffer. But we have to understand that in order to know the power of the, re uh, the resurrection of Jesus, then we have to know the power of his suffering as well. Okay, there's a cross with your name on it and there's a cross with my name on it. And I want to start out by talking about the cost of following Jesus, which is in my book. I will do a new thing in you, saith the Lord, available on highwaytoheavenchurch.net, y'all. And holler at a sister on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. For my real estate books, you can visit affordablehomesandapartments.com. All right. Now, 
Okay, now, the cost of following Jesus. In Matthew 16, 24 to 25, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross and follow me. If you, are, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. If you give up on your life for my sake, <clears throat> you will save it. Okay? And that just means just what it says. If you try to hang on to your life, in other words, things are going good for you, you know, you like what you're doing, you like how you're feeling, and if you hang on to that, you're going to lose your life. That's why so many people are dying off early and at young ages. Okay? Because they want their life. They want to do what they want to do. They don't want to do... Uh, but if you lose your life, in other words, if people persecute you and they treat you cruel and they treat you wrong and they abuse you and use you and you just hurt and carry it on, you've lost control pretty much, not necessarily, but, you know, in a sense, uh, we're talking about the spiritual aspects of this, of you lost control basically of your life and so now you gain it, okay? Um, you know, God works in, in the spirit and uh, he, you know, he protects us. Things may look like they're haywire in the natural but we have a God that works in the spirit, the spiritual realm. Now, following Christ may cost you your family, okay? It could even cost you your life, okay? Okay? Matthew uh, 10, 34 to 37, New Living Translation says, Don't imagine that I come to bring peace to the earth. I come not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law, and your enemies will be right in your own household. Ooh, that's a powerful word right there. Your enemies are going to be right in your own household. And baby, don't I know that that's true. And I got a book for that too. Okay, uh, which I'll introduce to you at a later time. <clears throat> now, if you love your father or your mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of me, saith the Lord. You're not worthy of being mine, okay? Or if you love your son or your daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember, if I didn't put it in there, I probably should add it in. Uh, the story about uh, Isaac, I believe it was, when he had, uh, when he had some children and uh, his wife wasn't getting pregnant. So he had his slaves, not Jacob, but he's, you know, he slept with his slaves so that they could have children, so that he could have some money to carry on his, um, you know, his dynasty, okay, but then uh, his wife got pregnant later on, he took, uh, he, uh, God had promised him that she was going to get pregnant, so all of that, you know, going, dealing with the slaves wasn't necessary, that was what he decided to do, um, and when, uh, when he finally had his son, uh, Abraham finally had his son Isaac, uh, he loved him dearly, and uh, Jesus wanted to, was testing him, see, that's part of being humble, I will do a new thing in you, highwaytoheavenchurch.net. Okay, Jesus was testing him. And he says, you know, I want, to see, I want to see if you love that boy more than you love me. You see, I just read you the passage that talked about that. And what happened, what did he do? He told him, he says, you know, you, you got to go and kill him. You got to kill him, kill him dead. And I'm sure that he had talked to his son about it. And I can imagine that his son being raised up in, <clears throat> in love and in Christian love, that he understood you know, that his father was just being obedient to the word of God. And he accepted his destiny just like Abraham had accepted his destiny and knowing that he had to kill his son Isaac. But just before uh, he, um, he had, um, you know, stuck the, the, the sword or the knife or whatever it was that he had to, you know, to kill him with, the angel came and, you know, stopped him. I'm so glad he wasn't hard of hearing, though, because he could have said, uh, he would have said, Abraham! And Abraham would have said, would, would, went on to kill the boy. And when he said, Abraham, didn't you hear me calling you? And Abraham would have said, no, Lord, I didn't hear you. <laughs> and he said, can't you raise him back from the dead? You know, <laughs> I don't know. I just like to have fun in the Lord, you know. Um, but, you know, this basically, so now that's, that's that part how Abraham was, was humbled. You know, so he was telling him, you know, you cannot love your son more than you love me. You can't love your fa your family. Nobody. God is a jealous God, baby. He's possessive. When he gets you, and you know, when he gets you, when you when you when he realizes you are his and he is yours, there's no turning back, baby. God is a jealous God. 
And he will do whatever he has to do to keep you, to teach you, to mold you, to scold you. All of us. Okay? And that's how I know I'm an expert at it because I done been through the fire. I done been through the rain. I done been through the storm and I done been through the pain, baby. But I'm here to tell you that God is a God of justice. Okay? He will not let you down. He will not defeat you, baby. The stuff that you think about that you, you know, the people are hurting you all up, don't even worry about that. You know what I mean? There's a word for everything that you're going through right now. You may be all broken up and everything, and your situation is hot. Nobody don't want to mess with you. But let me tell you, God is on the throne. And I encourage you to get a copy of this book on highwaytoheavenchurch.net. Uh, I will do a new thing in you, saith the Lord. <clears throat> and this is a picture of a butterfly turning into a, a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Now, how many of y'all know if God can turn a caterpillar into a butterfly, he can sure enough give us wings so we can mount up. Okay? Now, there's definitely a cost to following Jesus. Okay? Uh, Romans 12, 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Okay? Uh, there you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. James 4, 4, said New Living Translation, <coughs> says, You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I will say it again, if you want to be a friend with the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Okay, we must stop following the pattern of the world. The world pattern includes a focus on material things, money, pleasure, and winning. Okay. Uh, when we follow Christ, we stop having the desires of the world, world and fleshly desires. Okay. We must crucify our flesh, which is not going to be easy, and give up the desires consciously making a decision to follow Jesus. Okay, I'm not saying that you don't have feelings, that, we, that we, the things that we want are not natural, but we have to put our things in priority. Okay, what's more important to you, satisfying your fleshly desires or pleasing God? Now that you have to ask yourself. Okay, when we follow Christ, we choose to serve God and ourselves, and we should choose not to be a slave to people or to things. Again, like I said last week, if your peace is in your, your money, when you lose your money, you're going to lose your peace. You know, you're going to be all, you know, out of control. Do not love the world. As it says in 1 John, okay, do not love the world. If the, 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 and then you want to know why the world hates you. Because first of all, you're not of the world. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But since you are not of the world, since I am not of the world, the world's going to hate you. They're going to snarl at you. They're going to look at you funny. They're going to talk about you like a dog. They're going to call you everything but a child of God. Okay, they're going to mistreat you. They can smell you coming. Okay, they might be acting all crazy. don't even know why they're acting crazy when you walk in the room. Okay. But uh, let's, let's talk about a little bit more about the book. Now, one of the topics that I like is um, when he talks about uh, living water. If I can find it quickly. It talks about living water. Okay. I may have to just uh, talk about what I have found and then get to that later. But in this book, I talk about the healings of Jesus, how he walked the face of the earth and how he healed people. Because how many of y'all know that when you're sick and afflicted in the body, that the only thing you're thinking about is the will to live. The will to get better so that you can go ahead and live your life. You know, when, 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 uh, when Jesus, you know, came on the face of the earth, he began to heal people. You know, like I said last week, I think, you know, it must have been like the night of the living dead before Jesus came on the scene. Because, you know, everybody was sick, lame, you know. All broke up, you know, crippled, blind, you know, diseased, you know. Uh, and here Jesus came on the scene and started healing everybody. And now, that's why they got mad with him because he was messing with the economy. Now everybody, after Jesus healed them, now people needed a job now. Now, they want, now they're a productive member of society to be counted, okay, and to be included in the blessings. Okay, now I can't seem to find it now. I had it, uh, but it's in here. 
Oh, here it is. Jesus promises living water. <clears throat> now, this is closer to the front. Now, this is the, t the talks about... I'm going to just go in sequence after this because um, it takes a little too long to find it. When I have to, you know, I have it sectioned off, but now it says Jesus blesses the Samaritan women. I, I think this is one of the pro more profound, um, you know, things that happens in the Bible. Uh, because here this woman is, she's going about her daily business, and she's thinking, you know, I'm just going to go get some water for the day, you know, and go home and, and t you know, tend to my business, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, here he comes, she comes in and the meeting up with Jesus. Now, um, I believe the Bible says that his John 4, 1 to 26 says, Jesus knew the Pharisees and heard that he was baptizing. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John, who Jesus himself didn't baptize them. His disciples did. So he left Judas and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on his way. Eventually he came to a Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Jacob's uh, will was there. J Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tried. Jesus, tired from a long walk, sat wearily beside the wall, the well, uh, about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, "Please give me a drink." He said, "Okay, uh, alone. Okay, he was alone at the time because his disciples had gone unto the village to buy some food." The woman was surprised for Jesus to refuse to have said anything to, uh, uh, to Jesus refused to have anything to do with Samaritan. Okay, wait a minute. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. Okay, she said to Jesus, "You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink?" Jesus replied, "If you only knew the gift God has for you, and who you are speaking to." You wouldn't ask me, I would give you living water. And that's what we need to ask ourselves. If you only knew that the gift that God has for you, if I only knew the gift God has for me, okay, and who you really dealing with, who we really dealing with, 